Okay guys, welcome back. So last time we were able to set up our status codes and now we know where we are going to be picking the status codes. So in this one we are going to go ahead and start registering a user. If we go to our auth.py, you see we have an endpoint to handle, the, to handle the, the user registration. So if we went to our postman and, may, and so if we went to our postman and then created a new request and then a and then created a new request. So our new request will be a post request since our endpoint accepts a post. And we are going to be going to slash API slash v1 slash auth slash register and did a post request. We are not sending anything, but we get user created here. But this is not real. This is not working with the DB. This is not working. Uh, this is not checking the user's data. So what you're going to be doing is sending things like username, email, password. So when we get this in our in our handler, we should be able to like create a an encrypted password. We should be able to validate that the email is valid, that the email is not taken, the username is is alphanumeric, and all that fun stuff. So let's start here. Now I'm going to close down this because my screen is actually small. So we are going to start by importing a few things. So we'll get from what is this one called? So from WorkSack, we do dot security, import, check password hash, generate password hash. So generate password hash and check password hash are going to be used to encrypt the user's password when we save it in a DB, just so people don't actually go in the DB and they see people's login credentials. So now over here, what we can do is we can try to get the data that the user is sending. So we need the username, the email, and also the password. So to get what is sent in a post request, we need to also import requests from Flask. So with, with the request, we should be able to do put JSON. And then here we can define the key that we expect the username to be sent in. So expect this one to come in, in, in username. Let's do the same thing for the email and then the password. So email and then the password. So we're gonna do some simple validations. So we're gonna check if the length of the password is less than six. So it can be, if it's less than six, then we want to send back an error. So to send back an error, we're gonna be using JSONify. Yes, so let's get JSONify here. So send, send back JSON, we're gonna be using JSONify. So let's get that. So here we can just return JSONify and we can just say password is too short okay now like we said we always want to send back a meaningful status code now over here now this will be a, an error that can be solved by the user so we can send a bad request here so we can just do http 400 bad request and that's going to import our status code right here now that we have this check we can do a simple check for the username and also for the for the username and also for the password. So for the username, we're gonna check that it's alphanumeric. Let's first have a simple check to make sure that they're actually entering a valid name. So we just check the length. So we just check the length of the username. And let's have all our names be at least three characters and above. So we can just have username is too short. And be sure to change these messages if you deem better, if you have some better messages to use. So let's also, so now let's check that the username is alphanumeric. Now we can check if a string is have is alphanumeric by calling by calling dot is alnum. So we're gonna check if it's alnum. So we're gonna check if it's not alphanumeric. Also we're gonna check if it has a space in there. So we can just do if space in a username. Then you can tell them username should be alphanumeric. Also you can just tell them also no spaces. And also, now that we've validated the username and also the password, let's go. Let's go. Let's also go ahead and validate that the email they are giving us is a valid email. Now we could validate it using a regex, but I'm just going to save ourselves time by installing a package called validators. So I'm going to do pip install validators. So as that installs, then we can come over here and import validators. Validators. So if we have validators, then we can check that we can use that to validate emails and say if not validators dot email then we can pass the email that we want to validate so if the user's email is not valid then we want to send them a json response and tell them that hey your email is not valid so we're also going to check that if the email is valid it is not it doesn't exist already in our db since our restriction 
says that our email should be unique. So we can check that by doing if. So we're going to import our model actually because we're going to need to query the DB. So from source.database import user. All right. So here we can just do a query by doing if user.objects. Then we want to do filter by. So filter by. Then we want to check if the email equals this email. Then let's just do that first. Then we want to check if it's not none. So if it's not none, if it's not none, that means that we have one at least one record that matches. Then we can tell that the, we can tell the user that this one already exists. So we can return JSON. Then we say email is taken. We are going to do the same check for the usernames because the username should also be unique. Now, take note of the status code that we can use here. So if you go back to our status codes uh, right here, in the 400 level, notice that we also have one for the for the conflict. This means that a similar resource already exists on our server. So what you can do here is we can use that instead. So we can just do HTTP uh, 409. Okay, so let's do the same check for the username. I'm gonna come back over here and just do the same check for the username. So we're gonna check for username. And if it exists, we tell them, hey, it's taken and we send them a conflict response. So now that we have these checks in place, now we can go ahead and hash the user's password. So we can have pwd hash. So this is gonna be generate password hash. And then we just pass the password we want to hash. So the one you're going to hash, of course, is the user's password. So let's pass password in there. Now, once we have the password hash, then we can try to save this new user to our DB. So we can just have, we can say user equals, equals user. So when we instantiate it, we need to pass it, uh, we need to pass it the values that are going to save in our columns. So username is going to be the username. The password is going to be the hashed version of the user's password. So pwd hash then the email is going to be the user's email so once we instantiate our class then we want to add it to the db so here let's import user and also let's import db so down here then we can say db dot session dot add then we want to add user also we want to do db dot session we want to call commit just so our changes can be saved now once we update our now once we update our DB, then we can tell the client or now we can tell back the client that we were able to save this user on our DB and maybe they can go ahead and log in. So we can just return, of course we're gonna return the Sonify, and in here we can just have like a simple message. So message. So for the message you can say user created. Now we can also go ahead and send back the user. So user, we send back the username. The username is gonna be the username they gave us. Also, let's send back the email. And the reason why we are sending back this extra information is the clients might need to maybe welcome the user by saying, welcome, thanks for creating an account. So they can use this, this username that we confirmed on our server to just send a message like that. Then the last thing we're gonna need to send here is the status code. And whenever we create a resource on our server, we want to send back a 201. So we can do HTTP 201 created. So now, if we run, if we run back our server, so I'm gonna do first run. Notice how we get this warning here about SQL Alchemy. Now I'm gonna suppress it here, just like they are suggesting. I'm gonna suppress it by going to our init, and here where we configure our app, we can pass the SQL Alchemy URI, and also this. So I'm gonna set that one to not. I'm gonna set that to false, just so it stops yelling to us. So once you save that, you can see that it resets, no warnings. And now if you go back to our postman, so I'm gonna go to postman. This is the request endpoint. Then I'm gonna select JSON here. Now when we select JSON, then we can be able to send our keys and values. So we can just do like, like username. So for the username, I'm just gonna say username. Then you set the password. So the password can be password. Then let's also add an email, so it can be email have email at app.com and now if we made this request so if i click send oh notice that we get an error and the reason why we are getting this error is because we are doing dot objects so this should be dot query 
So let's change that one to slash to go to query. So now, if we retry to do the same request, notice that we get our user created and we get a 201. So, so now if we try to save to create the same user, you see we get the error, email is taken. So if we change the email, I'm gonna add another P and try again. You see that we match the username is taken. So I'm gonna change the username, but I'm going to make the password short. So if we try to do this, you said the password is too short and we can't use that. So let's just make sure our password is good. So for the username, I'm going to leave some spaces and also add some exclamation marks. If we try this, you see that our validation for the username is also working good. Now, if we do, now if we leave only a space, let's do that. You can see that it is still being handled properly. So if we run this, you can see that we get another user being created and yeah. So that's gonna do it for now. That is how we register a user. Now in the next one, we're gonna be talking about how to use JWT authentication, how that whole token authentication thing works and uh, how to set it up with our app and how to log in a user. So thanks guys for watching. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. I'll talk to you in the next one.